were sitting on the stage to watch all the excitement in the faces of the people that are going to graduate today and trying to remember how I felt 35 years ago. And I think I know, but I'm not sure, right? It's been that long. Also, watching as people were coming into the, uh, the seats, the sense of relief that I see that, uh, that the fact that you are graduating now, right? And uh, so just a great, great morning. I'm glad to be a part of this. I'm thankful for a lot of things. One of the things I'm most thankful for is the fact that the president, very early in this process, took out his hat. Because I've given a lot of speeches in my life, but never had to worry if this thing was going to fall off my head or not. So when he took his up, I was glad to take my own. Unfortunately, you guys can't do that right now. So. All right, but uh, really, the mic, take President before, Provost McAdams, Dr. Blanchett, the academic teams, Mr. Perry, and obviously the distinguished guests, friends, and family. Thank you for the honor of giving me a chance to return to this beautiful campus and share this special day with you. You know, it is a very special day, and it's all about you and all the hard work and the dedication and the effort that you did to go through to get this degree. And some days it seemed easy, I'm sure. Other days it seemed very difficult. But, uh, but you, you made it, so you should be happy. And again, I'm joined with the president and congratulating all the supporters that you have here. I'm pretty impressed when I see the number of getting your degree and then I see the number of people that are out here. There's a lot of support, and thank you for that support. You know, I have fond, fond memories of Delta State. And uh, of course, it was where I got my education. I'll always uh, be thankful and be grateful for that. But it was also a place where I developed relationships. But more importantly, it was a place where I grew up. When I came here as an 18 year old freshman, I had a lot of growing up to do. And this was the place that I made it to do it. But about this talk, President McCord gave me three valuable pieces of advice. First, he said, be interested. I think he certainly should be told about this. He's got to tell me to be interested. I've heard about it a little bit. He said, be inspirational. And he said, be free. And he said, if you can only do one of those three, be free. <laughs> so I think I can live up to that. And uh, so for the next nine minutes or so, I will talk about Time. Time, of course, is one of the most precious commodities in the world, right? It's not something that you can just go out and get additional time. Back in 1964, which I know as well, of course, when the were born, but uh, the Rolling Stones had a song, and it was Time is on my side. Now, I wanted to sing that to you this morning, but Sherry said, no way. That's my wife, right? And, uh, but hearing the president sing the national anthem, I think he could sing it. He's got quite a voice, so, uh, but time is on my side is what the song is all about. Of course, it's got a lot of things, but that's one of the key lines. And today, time is on the side. The question is, what are you going to do with time? And I've got five quick suggestions that I'd like to offer. The first one is going to surprise you a little bit, and that's take time to fail. Now you may think, why would I tell college graduates that if you've achieved something, and uh, people who are getting your back, you've achieved something great, the first thing I'm going to talk to you is about failure. And that's because we all go through the failure. In fact, I can tell you that throughout my career, I learned much more through failure than I've ever learned through success. And a lot of successful people out there would say the same thing. Do you know that Oprah Winfrey was actually fired from her job as a television reporter? Imagine that. How would you like to be the boss that fired Oprah Winfrey? Do you know? And uh, Steven Spielberg was rejected three times by the USC Film School. And he had like a 
three different times. And then there's Steve Jobs that we all know about, right? At 30 years old, Steve Jobs was fired from Apple. Done. Completed. And in a 2005 commencement speech in Sanford, he talked about that experience. I'm going to read what he said. I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. It's freed me to enter one of the most creative phases of my life. And then another pretty famous CEO of uh, Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, says, if you're successful, most of the things you've done were wrong. What ends up mattering is the stuff that you do right. If you get a few big things right, you can make some pretty important changes in the world. So I've often been asked along the way if I've ever felt and Nancy Bailey, you know? And, uh, but you know, it's not important about failure. What's important is that you learn lessons from it. And then it's how you react to it. So I have this pretty good ability that after I learned those lessons from failure, I completely wiped the failure away from my mind. Won't even remember it after the fight because I can't really think about it, right? I have to worry about what's next. I have to work with what I can do. And uh, so failure and how to react to failure is really going to be a key to your success. There's nothing positive spending a lot of time focused on what went wrong and supporting your life. The second one I want to talk about is take time to believe in yourself. Think about that for just a minute. I'm going to say it again. Take time to believe in yourself. You know, when you do think about it, even uh, if you're not going to believe in yourself, who really is, right? I mean, you have to sincerely believe that whatever you want to accomplish in life, and it's going to be different for all of us, that you can make it happen. Even if you have people with good intentions telling you that you can't do this, or people with good intentions telling you no one in our family has ever done anything like this, it doesn't matter. You have your life, you have your opportunity, and we really ask you to believe in yourself. Um, a secret of my career for the 20 different jobs I've had over 40 years is whatever responsibility I was given, sometimes maybe I wasn't totally prepared as I would like to have been, I always convinced myself that I was the absolute best person that UPS could have possibly put in that job. Now, was that always true? Maybe, maybe not, right? But it was the mentality. And so that's what I got in my mind. And that mentality gave me the confidence that I needed to be successful. The third one, and the more success you have, the harder this one becomes. Take time to listen. It sounds simple, but I'm telling you, there's too many people, especially too many successful people, that are too busy talking to have to take time to listen. And, uh, now, I think I've had an advantage. I've been married to Sherry for 38 years. I've got the chance to do a lot of listening over the last 30 years. I'm going to pay for that one later, but, uh, but uh, it has been helpful. But when you listen to people, you're sending a message. The message they're sending is to care about their point of view. By the way, if you listen to me, you learn some things too. And I think that's very important. As I began my new job as CEO, I did a listening tour where I went all around the world to talk to our employees, to our customers, to our investors. It's amazing what people will tell you if you just listen. So that's the third one. Fourth, take time to shine the spotlight on others. Society today is enamored with ourselves. I read where there were one million selfies taken a day. Probably half of those today already, right here. But 36% uh, of that one million get retouched before they ever get set up. You know, I thought that was it. But uh, 
But taking time to give credit to others. Robert Booker, who's a former chairman of the Coca-Cola Company, said, there is no limit to what a man can do or how far he can go. If he does find, he gets the credit. And that was said years and years ago. So we're making it a lot more modern now. It's, uh, there's no limit to what any of us can do. Uh, male or female, or how far we can go if we don't find his credit. What I have followed through my life is when things go right, I give the credit to my people. The people that have worked so hard to make things happen. I also believe that as a leader, when things go wrong, that I take the blame. Sometimes it's not so easy, right? Sometimes it can be a little painful. I believe it. But what does it, why do I do that? Maybe one, it is the right thing to do. But two, it creates loyalty of the people that you're around. If they know you have their back, and you know if they know you're going to give them the credit. And uh, it also teaches you a very important thing. Be responsible when things are wrong. There's so many people that when things are wrong, start pointing at other people. And uh, I don't believe that's the way to go. So the final thing, I know you're ready for the final thing, and the most important thing that I'm going to say today is take time to dream. And take time to dream now. You know, 39, 40 years ago, like many of you, I grew up in a very small town in Mississippi. And I remember watching planes as they would fly way overhead, imagining where they were going, and wondering if someday I would get to go to some of those places. I wasn't real sure that I was going to, but I know that I wanted to. And uh, I wanted to see the world. Fortunately, in my career, I've been given that opportunity. And uh, I haven't seen all 120 countries and territories that EPS operates, but I have seen my share. But your dreams are going to be much different than mine, and that's great. Your dreams should fit your personality. But what's important is that you do dream, then commit yourself to living out those dreams. You know, the American dream can still come true <coughs> for your generation. <clears throat> the New York Times uh, just did a poll recently. Only 64% of people believe in the American dream anymore. Think about that. I know it's possible, and it can start right here. You have a quality education from Dr. State. You're off to a great start. Horace Mann, <clears throat> who is a 19th century politician, <clears throat> said that education is the great equalizer. Education can lead you to places that you visit only on a map. Or I guess today we would say only on the map, right? But I hope you're ready for the interesting time in your own. So again, time is on your side. Yes, it is. And how will you spend your time? Just consider these suggestions. Take time to fail. Take time to believe in yourself. Take time to listen. Take time to shine a spotlight on others. And at the end, of course, take time to dream. I think you'll find that to be time well spent. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Randy. We are grateful for your time and your message and for the many ways that you give back to your alma mater. During Mr. Randy's remarks, I took the very best picture of this ceremony today for you all. Call me at President DSU on Twitter, and you will have a copy of the picture. It's my pleasure now to introduce Mr. Alan Perry, who is president of our IHL board, a distinguished member of that company board. He has just taken over the gallery as the president. He was appointed to the IHL board by Governor Haley Barber in May 2008 for a 10-year term. 
Just prepare the practice of law at the firm of Bradley, Aaron, Bolton, and Cummings. In Jackson, and prior to joining that firm, he practiced law as a partner and co-founder of Foreman, Perry, Watkins, Cruz, and Party. Mr. Perry is a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers. He has served as a member of the Standing Committee on Rules and Procedure of the Judicial Conference of the United States and as a member of the Board of Visitors of the Harvard Law School. Mr. Perry received his Juris Doctorate degree from Harvard Law School, graduating magna cum laude, and was awarded the Faye Diploma as a graduate with the highest grade point average in his class. He served as an editor and senior editor of the Harvard Law Review. Mr. Perry received his Bachelor of Business Administration in Accountancy from the University of Mississippi, graduating first in his class with the distinction of summa cum laude. Mr. Perry and his wife Anne reside in Jackson. I invite Mr. Perry, as president of the board, as elected, to deliver the board's authorization to award degrees. Mr. Perry, welcome back to Delta State. Thank you, Dr. Abney, for being with us today. The public calling of a person's name is historically regarded as both powerful and profound. 